The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Uh, hello, everyone, uh, and welcome to our webinar. Glad uh, you can take the time to join us. Uh, the web today's webinar is entitled "What's New in Visual CAD CAM and Rhino CAM 2020." Uh, we we got lots of things to cover here. Lots lots of exciting new things uh, that have gone to the product, and so um, though. Uh, any further ado, I want to get started on this. Uh, my name is Joe Anand, and I'm the product manager here at Microsoft. Uh, I will be joined today by Uday Honolagare, our support manager, who's actually going to be doing the dem demonstration of the product, product, the both of the products actually. Uh, just a little bit of housekeeping uh, before we get started. The recording of this webinar will be made available to all the registrants. Uh, what we'll do is we'll clean it up, take us a day or so to clean up the recording and we'll send out a link to all the people who registered for the webinar. And since we got a lot of things to cover, we're gonna keep uh, questions uh, to a minimum uh, during the uh, demo itself. Uh, we'll, we'll try to reserve 10 minutes for questions at the end, but since we got so many things to show you, uh, it might be difficult, uh, but uh, what I will be doing is I'll be watching the, uh, the chat window uh, for your questions. So if you have any questions during the webinar, please go ahead and uh, put it into that chat window, which that's shown at the big red arrow there. And then I will answer those questions from the background while Wude is actually doing the demonstration. And also, if we don't get any of your questions, uh, we'll make sure we'll send you an email later on. And if you have any questions that you did not get to during the webinar, please go ahead and send us email uh, to support at nextop.com and we'll take care of it. Next slide, please, today. Yeah, today's, uh, the topics that we're gonna to cover today are uh, initially we start with the visual CAD enhancements. Um, and then we'll, we'll look at the two and a half axis, uh, the CAM enhancements, uh, which will be both common to both the visual CAD CAM as well as the uh, Rhino CAM uh, products. That'll include the two and a half axis enhancements, three axis, uh, any of the usability enhancements that we have that includes uh, fixtures and setups and knowledge bases and things like that. And then finally, uh, the most exciting part of that webinar uh, is would be the, the three new modules uh, that we are releasing with the 2020 uh, product products. Uh, that'll be the G-code editor, and then a profile nesting uh, module, and then finally also uh, a Milturn module that was in beta uh, for a while. Uh, we are actually productizing it uh, for this release. Uh, so uh, without any more uh, talk from me, I'll let uh, Uday uh, jump on the demo at this point. Take it away, Uday. Thank you, Joe. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to you all folks. And uh, thank you again for uh, joining us today for our What's New webinar for our CAM 2020 products. Uh, today, we will be focusing on both Visual CAD CAM and Rhino CAM 2020 uh, during the demonstration here. So first, I would like to go ahead and uh, touch upon the enhancements that we've had for Visual CAD 2020, and then I will jump into all of the uh, CAM enhancements. So without any further delay, I'm gonna go into our uh, flagship standalone product, which is gonna be Visual CAD CAM. Uh, one of the many enhancements that has been introduced in Visual CAD 2020 is the ability to insert uh, background images, like bitmap images, and you could do this by going over to the modeling aids tab in Visual CAD and you'll see there's a new group over here which is called background image and you could click on place to insert an image and you could go ahead and uh, locate an image file. So it could be a JPEG, it could be GIF, PNG bitmap file. So you can select an image and uh, this will allow you to basically pick two corners and the aspect ratio is automatically determined as you pick the two corners. So once you insert the background image, you have options to move them around. You can scale it. You can hide or show the image. You can convert it to a grayscale. You can change the transparencies on it and also you can remove the image. Uh, one of the advantages of uh, using background images is you can use these for creating curve geometry. So you can use this as a reference and you can basically trace around these uh, using the various curve modeling tools that are available to you in Visual CAD. Uh, for example, I could use a NURBS curve in here to uh, trace around uh, the profile in here. So you can basically 
uh, click through a bunch of points in here to trace, to draw the shape that you'd like to do. So you can use the background bitmap to basically insert it in the background and then you can trace around it. And if you want to hide the image, you can go back and hide it. So this is available to uh, all users uh, using Visual CAD CAM uh, 2020. Now there's been several other improvements. I'm going to go through a few other improvements and enhancements that are in Visual CAD CAM 2020. So we'll focus on, as we are focusing on the Visual CAD enhancement at this moment. Uh, the next enhancement I'm going to cover here is the ability to offset curves in Visual CAD and we can use uh, corner options to either specify the offset to be a sharp or it could be a round which is the default option so as you go into the curve modeling tab you will have the option to offset a curve so as you select the offset command you see there's a prompt in here to select the corner type so if you want to do a sharp offset just type the letter s sharp pick the curve and now you can specify the offset distance so this basically creates a sharp corner offset as opposed to a round offset uh, as it used to do in the past releases. Uh, we've also introduced the option to do a fillet with a zero radius as well. So that can be used to extend and intersect curves. Uh, so for example, if this corner was uh, not joined here, you can use the fillet with a zero radius to basically extend it to a sharp corner. Uh, fillet is also available in Visual CAD 2020. Uh, Dynamic uh, dimensioning has been introduced here for the analysis tool. So when you basically measure a distance, uh, the distance is automatically displayed in here. As I pick two points, you can see that the distances are being displayed dynamically. As I'm selecting two points, you can see the distance is 12 inches, the distance between the two points. So this has been introduced in 2020 version of Visual CAD. Uh, also, uh, we introduced the ability to uh, automatically be able to pick or analyze diameters from uh, solid geometries. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring in a file in here where we can analyze uh, diameters from arcs from a solid model without having to go and recreate or extract curves from a solid model. So as you go into the Analyze tab, you could select Arc Diameter and you can just pick a face edge on the arc and it you see the diameter of the arc is three quarters of an inch. You could do an arc diameter, pick the edge right over there, that's inch and a half. So you could basically measure, analyze arc diameters directly from a uh, solid surface geometry in Visual CAD 2020. Apart from these, the translators have been uh, updated uh, for Visual CAD 2020, uh, and also there's been numerous uh, bug fixes and enhancements. Uh, in Visual CAD 2020, and you can uh, take a look at all of these in the What's New document for Visual CAD CAM 2020. So the next topic I'm going to be covering here is all of the enhancements in our CAM 2020 product. Uh, first, I'm going to start with uh, the CAM 2020 for two and a half axis enhancements, and uh, we'll start uh, with uh, an example in Rhino CAM where we'll go through some of the enhancements. Uh, so in two and a half axis, uh, we have introduced a true tricardal cutting path for slot machining operations. So as you program slot machining operations and you generate the tool path, you will notice that now it for, creates a true tricardal tool path, uh, which is new in 2020 over what we had in the past releases. Uh, so this option is automatically, the toolpath is generated. When you generate a slotting toolpath, it creates a true tricardal uh, cut pattern. So we can go ahead and run a simulation here so you could verify that. So that would give you a true tricardal toolpath. with slotting operations. One of the other enhancements that's also been introduced in slotting operation is you can select an open or closed curve and specify the slot width to machine in the slotting operation. So I could select an open curve. This could be as simple as just a, a line or it could be an arc. And in the slot parameters, you could select treat curves as slot splines 
and specify your slot width. So this would also create a tricardal toolpath for machining slots by just picking an open curve, or it could be even a closed curve, and you could specify the slot width. So these features are available in 2020, starting with standard configurations and above for slot machining. In two-axis profiling operations, we've introduced an option to automatically alternate based on the direction. So in this particular example, I would like to profile the outside and the inner profile. So in older versions, in the previous versions, you'd have to program the outside and inside as separate operations, or you'd have to alternate the curve directions in the CAD so to be able to cut the profile on the outside for this one and the inside for the inner geometry. Now in 2020, you have the option to alternate using nesting. So when this is selected, and if you choose outside for the outermost curve, the inner, the, the profile for the inner curve will automatically be switched to the inside. The toolpath will automatically alternate between outside and inside. So if I select the inside for the outer one, it'll be outside for the inner one. So you can automatically alternate between outside and inside. And this is a uh, useful option in profiling uh, for uh, programming your toolpaths. Now there's been other enhancements in two axis operations, uh, considering engraving. There's an option to fit arcs to your toolpath, uh, similar to what you have in other operations like profiling, pocketing. So engraving also now allows arcs to be fit to the toolpaths. In two axis, we've introduced the option for remachining to use the taper angle for the reference tool diameter. This is also an enhancement that's available in two axis operations and remachining is available in pro and premium configurations of our CAM product. Now, one of the other enhancements I would like to point out in two axis is in operations like pocketing, the ramp height is automatically set based on the depth per cut that you specify in for an operation. So uh, if the ramp height is set to a value that's less than the depth per cut, the system will automatically set the ramp height equal to the depth per cut for subsequent passes. So this would avoid plunging between levels before it starts a ramp. So the system will automatically set the ramp height equal to your depth per cut in two axis uh, pocketing and operations where uh, ramp height is a parameter that you can specify. The next set of topics I'm going to be covering would be the enhancements to our three axis operations. Uh, one of the major enhancements in three axis operations is what's called um, step minimization in roughing operation. And so would they, uh, can I uh, interrupt for a minute? So whatever would they have shown in the two and a half axis uh, enhancements uh, that you just finished showing, they're all available in all configurations. Uh, including the including the express configuration. Just wanted to make make that clear. Thanks, Uday. Thank you, Joe. So now we're going to cover the enhancements in three axis operations. Uh, so most of our users are familiar with the roughing process uh, in three axis. So in the case of horizontal roughing. Uh, you can see that the toolpath we've generated, we're generated using the maximum uh, depth per cut uh, can be set for the tool. In this example, I've set the depth per cut to be 100% of the uh, tool diameter. And I've created a roughing operation in here. And you can see these large stair steps that are being generated in the roughing process. Now in version 2020, uh, we've introduced a new option that's called minimize stair steps. And you will see this under the cut levels tab. You have the option to now minimize stair steps and you can specify the intermediate step down as a percentage of your step down control. So with this, it works like a remachining where the, the, 
it still takes the deeper cuts uh, based on the step down control that is specified and then it goes up in a reverse order to clean up those to minimize the stair steps as you're seeing right now it's cleaning up going up in a reverse order working its way from the bottom to the top once the the depth first the cut level is generated it goes back and work its way up to clean up those steps so this is a very efficient way of roughing to minimize the stair steps in three axis roughing operation so the idea here is uh, you're using the full depth of cut possible with your tool uh, to remove as much material as possible and then you're going back up uh, in reverse order to remove those stair steps so it's a very efficient tool path uh, at, the, at the end, uh, when you're done with this, you will get an almost a near net shape. Like what do they showing here? So here I'm going to compare this with the um, with the previous toolpath. So this is with the step minimization roughing, and this is without the step minimization roughing. So you can see the difference where it minimizes the stair steps by selecting step minimization roughing or minimize stair steps under the cut level step. Okay. Uh, this option is available from standard uh, upwards, uh, any configuration from standard uh, upwards. And uh, in three axis as well, in roughing operations, uh, we've introduced the uh, ramp height to be equal to, automatically to be equal to your depth per cut. So when the ramp height, if the ramp height is set less than your depth per cut, the system will automatically uh, adjust it to be to make sure that the ramp height will be equal to your depth per cut in three axis roughing operation as well, similar to uh, what we talked about in two axis operations like pocketing or recar roughing operations. So this is also a enhancement for uh, three axis roughing as well, where the ramp height for uh, is set automatically based on depth per cut. This also applies to horizontal re-roughing operations. There have also been other improvements and enhancements to four and five axis uh, toolpaths. Uh, I will be covering uh, the enhancements uh, for uh, the other enhancements in our CAM module before we go and cover the newer modules that we've introduced in here. So the next topic I'll be covering here is uh, some of the uh, uh, other utility enhancements, for example, introduction of fixtures in uh, in our CAM module. So to demonstrate this, I will go ahead and uh, bring in an example in here, and uh, we'll talk about how we can use fixtures in machining in our CAM product. Now, this is also available both in Visual CAD CAM and Rhino CAM version 2020. Uh, so with this 2020 release, we've introduced the option to define and specify fixtures. So you could uh, double click on fixtures and you can choose uh, fixtures that you'd like to add. So I'm going to select these two in here, right click and hit save. So you notice that I have two different fixture types. So I could select one or more uh, solid geometries as to define as fixtures, or you can define each individual fixture as a separate fixture in here. So once you have these fixtures defined, you can have them uh, account for those when you generate toolpaths in your, uh, in your uh, under the setup in here. So now, right now I have defined these fixtures. I'm gonna go ahead and run a simulation in here. So I'll pick simulate, and you will notice that um, Without these uh, fixtures defined, the toolpath is generated. It's not accounting for the fixtures in here in the simulation. I can also display these fixtures during simulation. So I'm going to go back, double click on the operation, and I'm going to select apply the fixture, generate it, and then go back and rerun the simulation. So as I run the simulation, you will notice that it detects a fixture collision. So I'm going to skip this. So I'm going to ignore the collision. All right. I can also toggle the display of the fixture during the simulation. So again, when I run a simulation, you'll notice that it'll detect the collision with the fixture. As you can see, the toolpath is running through the fixtures. 
Now, once I have defined the fixture. Oh, then you can also notice that the, the operation itself is flagged with a star uh, that, that tells you that the fixtures uh, have been collided. With, uh, the toolpath, I mean, the tool actually collides with the fixtures as it's uh, running through the toolpath. So. so to account for the fixtures, once you've added the fixture to the setup, so you can double click on the setup and you can choose under select fixtures tab to add the fixture. And then the next step is to go back and regenerate these operation. So I'm gonna right click, regenerate, and you'll notice that now the toolpath automatically accounts for the fixture so it's not colliding with the fixture anymore. So this can be applied to any operation under the setup as long as you have selected to add the fixture, account for the fixture in the operations. So this is one of the uh, many enhancements that's available in CAM 2020. And this enhancement is available from standard configuration on onwards. It's not available in the express configuration. Thank you. So the next um, enhancement is the uh, preferences dialog has also been uh, fully uh, reorganized uh, to make it more streamlined, as you can see right here in 2020. So all the preferences have been streamlined for geometry, features, stock, uh, cutting tools. Uh, so this has been completely uh, reorganized compared to our previous releases. I'm also gonna be covering now some of the other enhancements that are related to tool and simulation in uh, version 2020. Now uh, for this, I'll go ahead and switch into a RhinoCam product. And I'm gonna pull in an example in here. So we now have the ability to define tool holders uh, that have uh, taper holders. So you can specify the holder length, holder diameter. In addition to that, you can also specify the taper angle for the holder. So this can be defined on each and every tool type in CAM 2020. So once the taper holders are defined, you can, uh, when you run a simulation uh, with a, a you know tool that has a taper holder, this would also be able to identify collisions of the holder during the simulation as well. So in this particular example, we have a taper holder defined, as you see right there. And um, when there is a collision, it'll automatically uh, you know, warn or alert the user about a collision being detected with a taper holder with the stock material during simulation. So this is also a new feature in 2020. So as you can see, the collision is detected and it also marks those collision areas in the toolpath editor. So you will be able to see those uh, collisions in the toolpath as well, uh, where the collisions are marked right in here. Where there's a collision. So the holder collision during simulation. And uh, last but not the least enhancement that we have in um, usability enhancements is the enhancements to our knowledge bases in uh, version 2020. And I will cover that as well. So now with um, knowledge bases, the work zero information is also saved. So which means that when you define it works zero and you set it to, let's say for example, top and the northwest corner, when you save this to a knowledge base, and as you load the knowledge base on another part geometry, you define your stock, and you load the knowledge base in,
the work zero is automatically set to the northwest corner top of the material so you don't have to go back and pick these settings so as you generate it it automatically updates the work zero so if you go back and change your stock it flags your work zero dirty and as you regenerate it the work zero is automatically being updated to the location that you had specified in this case this happens to be the northwest corner and top of the stock so this is one of the enhancements to uh, knowledge base now uh, i would like to talk about the enhancement that we had for our drilling operation in cam 2020 so in previous releases when skim clearances were being set in drilling operations the entire part geometry was not being accounted for and with 2020 on all hole machining operations when the clearance is set to skim it will account for the entire part geometry so as you can see with the skim clearance it clears the entire part geometry as it transitions from one hole to the other hole now this used to be um, this is implemented for all other types of operations like facing pocketing profiling in the previous versions now with hole machining this is also available in version 2020 the skim clearance automatically honors the height of the part geometry as it transfers from one hole location to the other now i'm excited to cover the newer modules that we have introduced in version 2020 and i'm going to be starting out with our first module which is going to be our g code editor module and the g code editor module is available in version 2020 uh, it's available to customers who are active on maintenance and have standard configurations and above and uh, i will be covering this first in our standalone product which is going to be visual cad cam and i'll also to show the same thing in our plugin for uh, uh, Rhino as well, which is going to be Rhino Cam. So to load the G code module, you would click on the uh, Cam menu right across the top of your screen and then select G code editor. Now, the, the purpose and the intent of this module is to be able to take your G code file or your ISO G code file and be able to, um, you know, view the uh, back plot, the G code, and also make any edits, make any changes, and then repost it. So you can basically use this as your verification tool to be uh, able to view what your uh, G code or preview it, back plot it, and then you can also simulate it and output it to your uh, machine controller. Now, as you select Visual Cam or Rhino Cam and then G code editor, the uh, G code editor browser window appears over here on the left half. So it basically it overlays on top of your, if you're in the mill or any of the other modules, it basically switches over from that module to the G code editor module. And on the G code editor module, you have the main tab that's called the project tab in here. So first I'm going to uh, load a G code file. So I'm going to click on load. I can pick a file type. I could do NC or other file types. It could be dot text, uh, dot tab, dot, you know, CNC, whatever file type it is, you can select the file and then pick open. So as you pick open in here, uh, you can then set the arc type in here. So that basically displays your G code. So very quickly, if you noticed uh, the arcs, there were quite a bit of toolpath motions uh, when, we, when he first loaded that file. Uh, you might get scared about that, but uh, the reason it was coming in that way was because the arc motions are set incorrectly so yeah go ahead and change it then and show it to them yeah so if I change the arc motion to absolute so the arc centers you can see that arcs um, here uh, in the G code are basically previewing the back plot is previewing arcs based off uh, absolute arc centers but this particular G code file has arcs with uh, incremental arc centers so I'm going to change the arc center format in here and then pick apply and then this basically uh, previews it correctly so 
So once I have the G code file loaded, it appears in the tree in the browser window. And you can see it also lists all the tools that were used. Now I can right click and simulate it. Now before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and load the library, a tool library in here. So that was used for this particular G code. So I'm going to click load. I'll pick the library I would like to load so we can load a CSV file. And this automatically lists the tools that are in the library. So we have a flat mill, an engraving tool, a face mill, and a drilling tool. And then I'm going to go ahead and add each of those tools into my tool crib. So by selecting Add Station, we'll select the tools, add them to the crib. And as I add them to the crib, you'll notice that it automatically map the tools that you added to the tool crib to the tools that are in your NC file based on it's matching the tools. So it's not flagging these dirty. So now when I go ahead and right click on it, I could do simulate. And this basically simulates uh, the back plot of your G code. Now I could define a stock and also run a verification. So here I'm just doing like a toolpath animation in here of the G code back plot. Yeah, so this is uh, G-code uh, simulation, completely different from our internal toolpath simulation that's part of our CAM product. And you have controls very similar to what we have in our simulation where you can speed up the simulation, you can pause, go to end as well. So there's a tab for edit in here where you can make edits to the G-code itself. So for example, I can right click on this and say, go to the bottom of the program, switch back to the top. You can remove these uh, line numbers. So you can click on delete line numbers. You can insert line numbers uh, to format the code to make it uh, easier to read. I can insert spaces in here. So you can see it's uh, easy to view the code. So there's a space between each and every coordinate value in here. So you could convert them from lowercase to uppercase. You have the standard editing tools. You could do cut, copy, and paste, uh, rename, or make changes to the program if you want to insert a few lines. And then selecting save will automatically save this output in here. It'll ask you, would you like to replace it? I could say yes to replace it. And then finally, once you have these created, you could select output, and this will output the file with the changes. You could directly send it out to your uh, CNC controller or you could even um, you know, um, just save it out to an external drive or copy it to your network and then have it sent out to the machine tool. Now, there's, like I said, there's two main tabs in here, the project tab, and as you edit the code, you will have the edit and the simulate tabs. The edit tab allows you to uh, you know, modify the G code output. You could also simulate it. I'm gonna give you an example where we can simulate this with the stock material in here and uh, you could make changes. You could even print it out. Information will give you information about the tools being used, uh, the machining time, and also the total size of the file, uh, which is gonna be 14 kilobytes in here. Now this G code editor module is also available in RhinoCam. And I'm gonna switch to uh, Rhino here, and we'll show the same inside of RhinoCam as well. So in this particular example, I actually have uh, created a part right here, as you see it. And I also have defined a stock. I'm gonna pick Edit. I'll go into Simulate. And right now, you're seeing the simulation with the stock. Uh, again, this module is available for customers who are active on maintenance and have standard and higher configurations of our product. Uh, a couple of restrictions on the mo uh, module uh, in the first release. Currently, what it does is only simulates three, uh, three axis, two and a half axis and three axis toolpaths. Uh, it only handles that. And also only uh, G code at this point and no CL files or any, any of the other format files. 
And uh, additionally, what would I just mentioned about the AMS modules, uh, we are kind of doing a little bit of a different uh, way of selling this product. We are including that as part of all our all our configurations as long as uh, people have the maintenance subscription active. So if your maintenance subscription is active, this product will, you will get this product free of cost. Uh, and it'll continue running as long as your maintenance subscription is active. Once you go off of maintenance, this product will stop running. So, I mean, it's a, it's a really great uh, enhancement uh, for the maintenance that you pay. Uh, we feel like it's, uh, it's really a, a, a big step in, in terms of usability for our CAM products. So if you have any questions on the pricing, uh, please drop us an email and then we can, we'll be more than happy to help you with that. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. So the controls in the simulate tab are very similar to what you uh, are familiar with in our mill module. Uh, plus you have all of these edit controls. Uh, in the project tab, you have the options to uh, merge, transform, instance. If you want to make multiples of the same toolpath, uh, you can basically instance it and uh, create multiple, like a linear pattern of the toolpaths. You can have one or more NC files loaded per file. So if you are outputting the code based on tool numbers, you can have one NC file for each tool. And then basically you can load multiple NC files and you can simulate them. So it's not just limited to one loading of one NC file or one G code output file. You could have multiple files loaded in here. And saving your file in Rhino or Visual CAD CAM will save all of the information that you programmed in the G code editor module to your uh, 3DM or VCP file format. So the next module I'll be um, demoing here is going to be our profile nesting module. And this is also available in both Visual CAD CAM and Rhino CAM. And uh, you know, it's made available to customers who are uh, active on maintenance subscription. It comes included, the um, profile nesting module as well. So I'm going to go into our uh, Visual CAD CAM product in here, and I will uh, give you a demonstration of our profile nesting module. So I'll bring in an example. So I have uh, a bunch of 2D drawings in here, geometries, and profile nesting. Uh, the, the goal for this module here is to be able to nest the tool paths without having to nest the individual geometries as we did in the nesting module that we already have. So you can basically uh, program your tool paths and nest those uh, machining operations into a sheet, into one or more sheets. So profile nesting, so you can program profiling tool paths and nest those profiling operations. Now to go from any of your other modules to the profile nesting, so you can just click on Visual Cam and select profile nest over here. Or you could just click on the tab to the on the left of your machining browser to go from your mill to the profile nesting module as well. So there's multiple ways how you can toggle between the different modules. So the profile nesting module has two main tabs. We have the nest tab and the simulate tab. Uh, the workflow is very similar. Uh, we work our way from left to right as we work through these groups. So we define the machine tool. So this is uh, limited to two and three axes. So it's basically the number of axes would be three. The next step is to pick your post processor from the list. So you could use the same post processor that you've been using in the mill module. The same post can also be used with the profile nesting module in here. And you can specify the output file extension. The next step is to define the sheet that we would like to nest all the toolpaths to. You could either define the sheet by specifying the length, height, and the thickness of the sheet, or if you already have a uh, sheet that's drawn in the CAD, you can use select curves and select or highlight the curve, and then the sheet is automatically entered in, and you can specify a thickness for it. So I'm going to specify my sheet thickness to be a quarter of an inch. I can specify the uh, for the nesting process for the I can specify the starting corner nesting direction and also the grain direction as you click through this you have the choices to pick for the starting corner for the nesting direction and also for the grain direction in here as well so once you're done defining the sheets 
you can select OK and the sheets are defined. The next step, we would like to define our stock. So I'm going to select stock and box stock. Now, as we define the stock, the stock dimensions are automatically defined based on the sheet that we specified, including the thickness. As you can see, the height is set to a quarter of an inch since we put in the sheet thickness to be a quarter of an inch. So we have 36 by 24 for the dimensions of the stock and the height. And I'm going to set the uh, zero basically to the top of the sheet. So the stock has been defined. In the next step, I'm going to go ahead and define the origins. I'll use work zero. We'll pick set to stock, ISZ Southwest, or you could pick any corner of your choice. And then we are now ready to program our machining operation. So in this case, this would be a profiling operation. The operation dialog looks exactly the same as what you noticed in the mill module for profiling, except there's an additional tab, which we'll talk about in just a moment. So I have four different parts that needs to be profiled and nested into a sheet. So I'm going to be programming each part as a separate profiling operation to be able to nest those profiling operations into the sheet. So I'm going to use select curve edge regions. I can drag a window to select these parts. Select the tool. Specify feet and speeds. Set the clearance. In the cutting parameters, set the cut direction. Now in the profile nesting, this is also a useful option where I can choose to automatically alternate using nesting so to basically profile the outside of the outer shape and then do the inside for these holes by using alternate using nesting. In the cut levels, I'm going to set the total depth equal to the thickness of the sheet, which is going to be a quarter of an inch. Specify entry and exit parameters as needed. So I'll just pick none in this particular example. And then I can go ahead and choose the additional parameters like advanced cut parameters, cornering options, very similar to what we have in our profiling operation. Now the additional tab that you see here is the nesting parameters where you can specify the count or the quantity. So how many uh, of these profiles would you like to uh, nest into the sheet? So I'm going to put in a number, I'll say 20 of this particular uh, part I would like to create. And then I pick generate. And this creates a profiling operation. We still have not nested this into the sheet yet. So I'm going to go ahead and the next step is to define the nesting parameters. When I click nesting parameters, this allows me to specify the orientation step angle for the nesting. And if you have parts that can be nested inside of parts, that can be, you can select allow parts inside of parts. And you can specify the distance between part to part. Since I'm using a quarter inch tool, I'm going to be setting the distance part to part as 0.3, distance from the part to sheet. And you can specify estimate number of sheets. This will tell us how many sheets would be required to nest 20 of those profiles. So it requires two sheets. And I'm going to select update the sheet count. So the sheet count is automatically updated. And then execute the nest. So when we execute the nest, you'll see there's a new setup created in here and it displays sheet one and sheet two. Now, if you expand the sheet one folder, you'll see that it lists each and every profile operation. So there's a total of 15 operations, and the user has the control to go back and make edits to each of the individual operations. So if you want to change any of the parameters for each of these, you can just double click, make the edits, and generate it for the operation. So for both sheet one and sheet two, as you expand it, you'll see the operations that are uh, nested into the sheet. Now, to go back and add the other uh, other profiles. Oh, uh, would I, uh, just to interrupt you. The reason uh, we have these listed, uh, individual profiling operations listed under that, each of those sheets, is you can actually go ahead and edit an individual operation if needed. I mean, we're assuming that you cannot, you don't typically want to go in and manually change these after they're nested. But in some specific cases, you might have to change, for instance, in the entry point maybe, because because of the, you don't like the way the uh, the cutter is engaging or entering the material. 
So, the, so this gives you the ability to actually go and edit individually, uh, individual operations after the nesting has uh, taken place. Thank you, Uday. Thank you, Joe. So once these operations are created, you could even go ahead and run a simulation. So I could just select the nested sheet, right click, and then pick simulate to simulate through each and every operation. So it'll simulate both the sheets. And you can control the simulation speed as well. So once the sheet one is completed, it'll start the simulation of sheet number two. And as far as post-processing goes, you can post both the sheets or you can post each sheet individually to separate NC files. So I'll just pause the simulation in here. We'll switch back to the Nest tab. And now I'm going to go back and add a few additional uh, you know, profiles to an operation. So I'm going to make a copy of this. So you can right click, do a copy, paste, or just use Control C, Control V to copy, paste. And as I made a copy of it, you notice that it automatically flagged the nested sheet setup, indicating that you made some change to the operation. So I'm going to double click on this operation here, remove. I'll add one more component in here. I can change the quantity of this, generate. I'll make one other profile, double click to edit. I'll pick this geometry in here and generate it. Now that I've made the change in here, I'm going to select this setup, right click and do execute nest. So it automatically updates it. And you will now notice that as I select sheet number one, you can see that we have the additional parts also nested. And since I chose in the nesting parameters to allow parts inside the parts, you can see that one of the smaller parts is nested inside this as well. So to make, you know, to make it more efficient. So if you want to go back and make changes to the nesting parameters, you can just click on the nesting parameters in here, and then you can say estimate number of sheets. You still need two sheets right there, and then execute the nest, executes the nest right there. So once we have the toolpaths generated, I can do a post then post-processing it will output sheet one to one NC file, and we can have the sheet two output to a separate NC file. Or you can post both operations to one NC file by just right-clicking and post. Again, this module uh, comes included with maintenance to all our customers who have standard and higher configurations of our CAM 2020 product. Now, the last module I would like to cover today here in our webinar is going to be our Milturn module. And this module comes included with uh, maintenance for customers who have professional and uh, premium configurations of our product. Now, to switch to the Milturn module, so you just go up to the menu. It could be Visual Cam or Rhino Cam. And you would want to select Milturn. So Milturn module allows you to program both turning as well as milling operations. And you can see the browser interface. You have a tab for turn programming operations, mill programming operations, and then you can simulate these operations. Now the turn programming operations are similar to what we have in our turn module, which is a where you can program X and Z axis. And then if you have a C axis, you can program it using indexed, using creating different setups uh, in using the mill module. Uh, so you have mill and turning operations that are included under one roof under the mill turn module. So in this particular example, I have programmed turning operations first to initially rough it out. So we have a roughing and a finishing operation. And then with the help of setups, and using the mill module, you've added a new setup to orient the coordinate system to program additional operations from the mill module, which would be facing, profiling, and the drilling operations. 
So with the C axis being indexed, you can create additional setups in here to orient it to desired orientation, position, and program toolpaths using the mill module. So this mill turn module uh, is available to our customers with maintenance and using pro and premium configurations of our CAMP 2020 product. So with this, I would like to um, hand this back to Joe. Yeah, thanks, Jose. Um, so we have about 10 minutes left uh, for questions. Uh, as you can see, we've got a lot of things that we covered. Uh, if there's any questions that you might have at this point, uh, we can uh, take some time to answer those. So there was a question about uh, our mill turn with an expert license. I can take that. Uh, there was a question regarding uh, a customer having an expert license, and he's wondering if he, he will have the uh, will have access to the mill turn module. Again, this mill turn module uh, you will have if you have an expert license and your AMS is active, you will have uh, access to the mill turn module as well. So. Uh, and uh, for the mill turn module, uh, it, it is also an AMS uh, module. And for that to be active, you need to have at least a three plus two, uh, three plus two license, which which will start from. Um, I believe it starts from the uh, expert. Uh, is that uh, correct today, or is it the pro? Uh, the pro. I think it starts the pro. Yeah, it starts from the pro and uh, above. So so it was uh, as far as the expert, you'd probably. Uh, would have to upgrade to the pro module to get the get the the mill turn because what we have in the pro is a three plus two the ability to create multiple setups and that's important that is actually essential for the mill turn module that functionality is only available in the pro product but we can also uh, if you have the expert and you just want to add the three plus two we can we have options for that so you can talk to our sales department regarding that Uh, there's a bunch of questions here. Let me let me try reading through this. When will the licenses be released for uh, the 2020 product? We are working. Uh, we have a few loose ends now that we are working on uh, to uh, to wrap this up. So we're hoping in the next couple of weeks uh, we will be releasing the products, at least the Visual CAD CAM uh, and the Rhino CAD CAM products. Uh, the uh, Libre Cam and the, and the Visual Cam for SolarWorks will be uh, in the first month or January of next year. That's the plan, the current plan. So, uh, there was a question about can you do search and replace on the G Code editor? That's a great question. There was one of the enhancements that uh, didn't make it to the release. There was uh, it was an important one that we actually had had in the uh, specification document. It did not make it, uh, but but it's definitely a top top uh, priority item for us to get to the next release, or maybe possibly even a service release uh, pretty soon. Uh, license manager, yeah, there was some license manager changes. There was a question regarding license manager changes. Whether you want to talk about that, uh, we have actually added one additional type of licensing. We're calling it the the network uh, net, network authenticated licensing. Uh, one of the things that we heard, uh, in, you know, the previous versions. Let me back up a little bit. In the previous versions, what we had was we we had two types of licensing. One was uh, Node locked, which most of our customers, commercial customers use, node locked. And then the other one was uh, a network licensing. The network licensing was a little bit of a hassle to set up, and that was uh, basically uh, allowed only for educational institutions and large corporations who wanted to be uh, behind the demilitarized zone, if you will. So they wanted to be in a dark area where they did not want any of their uh, client machines to talk to the internet. In those cases, uh, we 
we allowed a certain type of licensing called a network licensing, uh, which uh, we had implemented in previous releases. Uh, but uh, we got a lot of complaints from our users about that. Uh, so we, in, we have introduced a new type of licensing called um, network authentication licensing. That this is this will allow you to be locked to a network. Make, it makes sure that these licenses are locked to a particular network so somebody cannot walk away. Let's say you're a large company uh, with multiple licenses and you don't want one of your employees leaving uh, the company with the license and taking it with them. Uh, this this type of license, um, uh, network authentication license, actually allows you to set up multiple licenses in a particular network. And but the only caveat for that is it is it, each of the client machines has to have access to the internet, and they will have to talk to our licensing cloud. Uh, Uday, do you want to add anything to that? Sure. Um, so basically, with this new option, um, there would be a, a you know service that you set up on one of your computers in the network, and the clients would be able to you know check out a license by talking. To the through the internet, so you don't have to go through an elaborate setup process. The process would be uh, in a pretty in a simple, and uh, the license would be activated using the uh, uh, the program that we provided to run the service. And then the client will basically all you have to do is point to the server, and all of that can be set up in the under the licensing section in the in the preferences under CAM preferences and licensing. So you have the new option called network authentication service. So the installation and the setup process, as I would say, fairly simple, would probably take less than a couple of minutes to set it up. Yeah, and there's no uh, virtual machine setup or anything of that sort. It uses uh, our existing node lock licensing scheme, uh, but we call it uh, concurrent licensing. So uh, the uh, again, as I mentioned, the only, only requirement for this to work is that all the client machines have to have uh, access to the internet uh, because they are talking to the cloud to actually fetch a license. And the nice part is uh, it can run on any Windows machine. It could be even a Windows Server, virtual Windows Server, or any uh, you know machine that runs Windows operating system. So you don't have to set up a dedicated uh, virtual machine for it. There was a question about uh, the SolidWorks product. Will all of these work uh, in the SolidWorks product also? So all of the new modules we are releasing will also work in, the, in our parametric systems. Uh, they will work in SolidWorks as well as the Alibre Cam products. The nice thing about the profile nesting module that we have introduced is that it will also work in uh, you know, SolidWorks as well as Alibre, Cam, Alibre Design. And uh, you, uh, users might know that uh, we did, we could not have the nesting module, uh, nesting or the art module running inside of the SolidWorks product because SolidWorks is a parametric system and not curve-based at all. So it was very difficult for us to implement nesting or any of the mesh-based uh, modules like art. Uh, but the nice thing about the profile nesting is uh, it, since it does not use any of the curves, um, that uh, our sketches in, inside of SolidWorks, we can implement the nesting module also, or the profile nesting module also in, in SolidWorks. So that's a great benefit or a great uh, bonus that we have. So all the uh, SolidWorks users will have access to all three of the, uh, the new modules that we have. Okay, uh, I've got time for a couple of questions. I'm reading through this. I'm trying to pick up some, some of the easier ones. There are some, some things that are difficult that we can get to here. Uh, okay. Is there an option for slotting to allow stock remaining uh, for cleanup? Okay, do you want to take that? Is there an option um, for the slot? In the slot operation, we do have the option to specify um, stock to be left, and you have a cleanup option in the slotting operation that you can do. So it basically does like a cleanup pass, like a profile pass to go clean it up. So it's part of the same operation. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all we have time for. Uh, some of the questions, uh, we have about 10 or 12 questions that I uh, haven't gotten to yet. 
Uh, so what we will do is we will make sure that we uh, get to them, uh, respond to them, and send you an email uh, so that uh, all these questions are answered. And then if you have any additional questions, like I mentioned before, uh, please go ahead and uh, send us email at support at mexoft.com. And then, uh, uh, and then whether you want to switch the slide. And then, of course, uh, we are going to be releasing it uh, soon. And then uh, we are actually thinking about uh, doing a year-end sale that's going to be coming up pretty soon. Uh, we'll be sending out an email uh, tomorrow, I believe, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that's that's got some uh, some pretty interesting uh, sale this uh, sale uh, discounts. That's the sale will be available only in North America for the 2020 products, and uh, we'll be sending it to all our prospects. So you should uh, please look out for that. So a lot of exciting things in the 2020 release, and we are really looking forward to getting you up and running on the 2020 version, and then uh, you know continuing to enhance our CAM products as we move forward. Thank you all for joining us today. It's been great. Uh, we had a lot of uh, interest in this. And again, thank you very much. And um, take care. And we'll be in touch. Thank you. Bye-bye.